Hi, hey, this is Dave Julian, and I'm going to show you how you can take your handwritten signature and create a watermark out of it for use in Lightroom. Now, you'll also have to have Photoshop ready, so make sure you have access to Photoshop. And hopefully both of those are down in your dock or on an alias on your desktop so that we can try drag and drop as well. So what you'll notice here is a finder window here on the Mac where I've got some sample photographs from a tutorial called Add a Signature Watermark and I have also my pre-photographed kinda haphazard looking signature. I'll put those aside for now. Now I've imported those into Lightroom so here is my signature. I've kinda made a worst case scenario here. It's heading uphill, it's on textured paper, you can't really see it very clearly and I'm going to make it super crisp and we're going to do that together. I also want to bring your attention to some photographs that I have here as samples. Here's a shot of a favorite cab in Trinidad, Cuba. It has a mid-tone background and here's a version of it with my black watermark that I've also reduced the opacity of because I believe that when using a watermark it should be just that. It should be a visible attribute to you as the artist but it shouldn't take over the photograph and distract from the content like so many watermarks do. I'm also going to make a little point here. Um, of course these two signatures look very different because I made this one very carefully for use in artistic purposes and this one I just made for the demo. What I want to say is that people often buy their signature watermarks online from companies that give you these very fancy signatures and I think that's okay in part, but my beef with it is that it's not your writing. It's not your signature. It's a signature you bought using a font and some text, and I'm not sure that that really represents you as an artist, but if you think it does, then buy one and you can still use it here in Lightroom. So, okay, I'm going to get off my soapbox and start ranting about, stop ranting about that. Here it is. So, I want to take you into the process of making your signature into a usable watermark. So open your signature file in Photoshop. I'm just going to drag it onto my Photoshop icon on the dock, which you can't see in the picture right now. But it'll open into Photoshop much as yours will. Now this is not usable yet in Lightroom because it has a textured and kind of dim background and the, you know, my signature is not that visible yet. So what we need to do is first crop it. So I'm going to grab the crop tool in Photoshop. I'm going to bring the crop down to a smaller size around the signature and I'm going to then put my cursor outside and straighten my signature out so it looks rather pleasant there okay as pleasant as it can be anyway and I'm going to say okay now the process that's next is to optimize this image so that it's a good visible signature without so much background I'm gonna go up into image adjustments levels or command L and our idea is to take this shadow midtone and highlight histogram I'm going to take midtones and swing them to the left which starts to remove that background I'm also going to take the highlights and drag them to the left and that starts to really give me a white background now sometimes you've got a little bit of tone in the shadows and still can be visible in your signature if you want to clean that up then take your shadow tool here and bring it to the right and now you're really compressing and making a very high contrast signature and just say OK and we're almost out of the woods. We want to take this layer that we've then made and we need to select away all the white pixels in order to just leave the signature and the best way that I can show you to do that quickly and easily without using selection tools the way so many YouTube videos tell you to do which gets into trouble when you have all kinds of small spaces here and things like that is to go to the channels panel which I have loaded next to layers in history and if you don't you can get it here in the window menu by just going to channels from window all of these channels, which normally would be different in a real true color image, are all the same now. So I'm going to have you just take the one that you have here and drag it onto the selection icon at the bottom. And what that does is it automatically selects everything that's white in the image. That way we can delete it. And there we go. Now we go back to layers and we simply hit 
the delete key. And magically that takes away all the white pixels. You can even hit it twice if you feel there might be some leftovers. And I want to deselect there, so I'm going to go to deselect. Now we have a black signature on a clear background and all we need to do is save that by going to save as not save but save as that way we get this extended dialog that lets us choose the file type we want to save it as a PNG file which is a web ready file that also can have no background much the same way the icons on your desktop look and then I'm going to name it DJ black sig that's just my shorthand for that and I'm going to put it on my desktop because that's where I'm going to want to find it later. You can ignore any of this and just hit save. And you can ignore this and hit OK. Now, we've made a black signature, but we have not made a white signature. That's even easier than you think. All we have to do is go back to Image, Adjustments, and choose Invert. Or Command-I, or on a PC, that would be Control-I. Now we have a white signature, and guess what? We go back to Save As. We choose PNG. That's the most important step here, which puts that suffix on. And I'm going to call this one DJ White Sig. It is going to be on the desktop, so I'm scrolling down to desktop. You can store yours anywhere you want, but that's convenient. All right, now we're done with the Photoshop part. Now, a good thing to do at this point, since we have a prepared document that you've taken the time to make, is to save it as a Photoshop layered document. And that way, whoops, I spelled it wrong. I should have stuck with SIG, right? Now I have the layered version in case I want to go back and do that at any other time. Um, change the signature in some way or you know just in case I lose them which can happen. That's it we're done with the Photoshop portion so I'm going to quit Photoshop just to get it out of my way and we're back to Lightroom. So let's apply it now. I'm going to select all of these photos right I did that by going click shift click the last one. I'm going to go to export now which is right here and the only important thing right now that we're concerned with other than choosing file size and things which, which we're not going to do with is to go and choose our preset but we don't have one made yet so we need to go into the edit watermarks you can see how many I have here from all these demos and also for different purposes and I'm going to go to the edit watermarks dialog which pops up and what we need to do is hit choose and then navigate to the desktop and I want to choose my white signature PNG file and there is the white signature you can see that I can drag it to any size I want I can choose the opacity I don't like to have fully opaque so I like to go a little less, but just for the purpose of moving this around to different places in the photograph, I also like to use the lower right, and I'm going to reduce the size here, and you can see that a white signature in this part of the photograph may be a little harder to see, but if you like signing your things on the lower right, which is the most common position, then that means that we would probably be better off with a black signature. But before we go and load that one, I just want to take you through this. This is little known. Very few people realize that you can navigate to the different photographs that you're exporting to see how your signature will work, which means that sometimes you may choose a different colored signature for certain files. And this brings up the point that the best thing to do when exporting is choose just the images that will work with the signature you're going to put on, i.e. lighter images for a black signature and for darker images choose your white signature. Okay. Now before we go we're going to go and re-choose and grab the black signature. Oh wait, I didn't save this yet. I want to save this as a white preset so DJ 
I'm going to abbreviate white to WT, signature, and I'm going to put LR for lower right, and I'm going to put 100, meaning 100%. This is my shorthand for what the signature is, what color it is, where it is in my photos, and how opaque it is. Hit Create. Now while I'm there, I could go back to Edit Watermarks. I wouldn't have to re-choose it. It's already there. And I could choose to make, oh, maybe a 70% one. All I have to do is hit Save. And because I made some changes, it's going to ask me to relabel the preset while making a second one. DJ WT, SIG for signature, and this time 70. Whoops. Lower right, LR. So this is just my personal shorthand, but it makes it very easy to find these signatures in a big list like you saw before. You can elaborate more deeply if you like. So I could keep making different opacities here so that I have presets that automatically bring my signature to the opacity that I want and the position I want. And it's also a good time to load our black one in, even if we're not going to apply it right away. I'm going to go to Edit Watermarks, go back to the Chooser, choose my black signature, and there it is. It's in 100% black. Whoops. Now it's in 100% black. Now it's in 60 or 70% black. If you find that your signature isn't bold enough, then remake it with a heavier marking pen or whatever. But at 100%, it's still pretty fine, but it's a nice signature considering the images are usually larger uh, online. So that's perfect for this. I'm going to save. Uh, guess what I'm going to call it? DJ Sig BK for black 100 LR. That's my shorthand again. While I'm here, and I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to make one that's less opaque. I'll go to 60% eh, sounds like a good one. Hit save. DJ SIG. You can see that I'm kind of doing things differently each time because I forget what I did before. So in that case, if you want them all to look just the same, I'll add LR. Why don't you just copy this? I'm going to go up here to copy. And next time, I can just paste it in and change the opacity like this. One more time. Lower it to 40, just because it's a good demo. Go here, and now I don't have to go and type it again. I'm just going to go paste and change this. See how it says name already in use? Right. They're smarter than I am. They're 40% lower right. There it is. Now, if you wanted to change position, you, of course, keep making new presets. And that's when you end up with a list of presets. Now I'm going to actually do the export. I have a white one loaded and I'm going to go to the desktop and I'm going to export these. There we go. So the one with the black worked fine. I'm not sure you saw that. It kind of crept out of my image zone. Here's one that I did with the car. I'll bring that back into the image zone. Here's one I did with the Palouse, the rolling hills in eastern Washington. Oop, that one doesn't have a signature on it, so that must have been from an earlier time. Sorry about that. Anyway, lots of files on my desktop from doing this demo a couple of times. So that's how you do it. Um, I'm going to pick this one here and just go through that again. I'm going to hit Export. I am going to choose my white, and because Lightroom doesn't give you a previewer to see whether that particular opacity is desirable for this photo, even though I think it will be, you can just simply go down to Edit Watermarks, and you'll see that it needs to be rechosen. And there it is. So that's the 40% white one. And because it says edited, I'm just going to go and hit update preset. So 
I'm glad this is happening because it just goes to the point where occasionally you'll have to re-choose and refind your signature. For whatever reason, it'll be deleted or lost or orphaned. And that's a good opportunity because anytime you want to change the settings of an existing preset to make things faster, all you have to do is load another preset in, change your opacity or position or size. And then if you want to update this, you just simply go to update rather than creating a new preset. Hit done. And now you're ready to export. It's going to ask me where I want them put them on the desktop. And yes, I have one of that name already. Boom. Let's take a look. And there it is. Whoops. Get this thing smaller for you. There's the signature. So now you understand how to take your signature and make it into a usable and modifiable watermark. That's it. Have at it. And Email me if you have any questions, art at davidjulian.com. I hope you enjoyed this and can use it wisely.